Today I want to talk about variables and functions, uh, two concepts that are at the core of computer programming. Variables are um, storages in a computer program for information. We can keep track of uh, particular parts of a calculation, we can keep track of information input by the user, we can keep track of uh, aspects of the computer system or in our simulations we can keep track of for example the location of parties, the name of parties, the location of voters, the party the voter votes for etc. All of that is information that the computer needs to keep track of, of while the program is running and that we do in variables. The second thing I want to explain is functions. Functions are pieces of computer code that can um, perform particular aspects of the program and most computer programs therefore consist of many functions that are all combined together to do the overall task. So calculating the distance between a voter and a party will be a function or um, calculate the square root of a number is a function etc. So these are just specific steps that are taken in the program. Um, one thing to keep in mind when we talk about variables in computer programs uh, this is very different from the idea of a variable in statistics. So in uh, mathematical functions you have variables and they are they act a little bit like uh, variables in computers do. Um, but variables in a statistical analysis and especially random variables this is completely unrelated to what we're talking about here. So whenever if you also do a, a statistics course or you have done a statistics or econometrics course um, Try to forget for a while what, what you have in mind when you think of a variable because in computer science a variable is a very different thing. It is a storage in the computer of some information and with a particular name associated to it. So let's talk about variables first. Variables have three aspects to them that we need to discuss. Variables always have a name, they always have a value and they always have a type. Now the type is often implicit and you don't always see what the type is, but you can investigate it. And I will demonstrate this uh, after this slide. So the name is a name that you give in the program to the variable. And every time you will need this value, you can refer to it by the name. Uh, so here's a very simple example in, our, in Python code. A equals 4. Equals in Python is an assignment operator. It assigns the value 4 to the variable a. And since we did not have a yet, it implicitly also creates this variable a. And internally, you can think of it as a mapping, as a little bit of space in the computer memory where we saved it, this number 4 and that we from now on refer to as a. So that whenever I say a, I mean whatever value is in that part of memory. So think of this vertical column, the white squares, as pieces of space in computer working memory. And think of the name on the left as references. So this first value in computer memory, we name A, and from now on A refers to the value 4. This storage also has a type. In this case, the type is integer. An integer is any number uh, either negative or positive, uh, but without decimal point. Yeah? So in a computer it can store a very wide range of numbers. Um, so this can be a minus 5 million, billion, etc. Um, to plus, uh, but no decimal point. So 4 is an integer. It's a number um, and it's saved in, in a storage that we refer to as A. And we can do many of these assignments. So for example, we can have a variable h underscore yos, which is 43, right? So now we have a space in memory where we store this number, 43. There's no decimal point, so this is an integer value. And the name to refer to this is h underscore yos. And we have not affected the earlier memory space, that is a, that is the 4. We can also have other types of variables. So for example, name equals... Uh, yos, then the um, memory uses probably three spaces or four depending on how Python is internally implemented that has the J, the O and the S. So it's a little bit like a chain of positions. 
and the word name will refer to that string or strictly speaking will refer to the first point of that string and a string is a memory type that contains text yeah so um, JOS is a string of text and it is stored in memory and we call this name and whenever we use the phrase name we mean this space in memory where this string is stored um, then we can have a space in memory that we call, tail, call continue underscore program and we set it equal to true so here uh, we have a value that is true um, that is in this particular memory space and we call it continue program internally Python will always save a true as a 1 and a false as a 0 that is just an internal thing you do not have to worry about. so it will store the value 1 because it's true and the type of variable is boolean or bool in, in Python language so a boolean value is a value that can either be true or false and no other possible values and in python we always write that with a capital t and then small r u e or a capital f and then small a l s e so these are already some of the main types of variables that we will be working in integers strings and booleans in in python lingo that will be int str and bool we can also make changes so the plus equals sign means that we will add and add the number uh, to that value so h underscore yos that was 43 in the second line now becomes 44 yeah um, it's not quite my birthday yet so this is uh, not true but just to show you so now the value in that memory space that is referred to as h underscore yos that was 43 is now 44 so we've changed the value there it's still an integer and it's still referred to as h yos and and most likely it is also still in the same place in memory but the value has changed we can also use variables in calculations for example i can say that x is equal to three times a a was four right we have four stored in that space of memory that we refer to by the name a so if i say x equals three times a then um, the value is 12 and we get a new space in memory where the value 12 is saved note that only the value is saved you cannot look at this space of memory and know that it was three times a the value there is being saved not the calculation Um, and we can also have floating point numbers, numbers with decimal points. So integers have no decimal points, they are always rounded numbers. We can also have what we call in computer science floating point numbers, or float in Python. So if I want to save the value 15.43 and refer to that space as the weight, I can do something like this. It will take more space in memory. So it will not be in one spot, but more like a string of text. It will take multiple spots. But how exactly that is done, we will not bother with in this course. So uh, just to show you on the slides, I use 15.43, but that's not exactly how it works. But it saves a floating point number. It will take more space than an integer number. Um, and we can make calculations with this. So I have just explained uh, what variables are, that these are parts of memory that we associate a particular name and type, and then we can assign a particular value. I gave the simple code of A equals, uh, I think, 4 it was, and now we have a piece of memory uh, where A is stored. If I type print A to print the value of A, I will get that value, and it's 4. If I the function type a it will tell me the type of this variable which is an integer so by saying a equals 4 by using the assignment operator equals i have created a piece of memory where the value is 4 the type is integer and the name is a and whenever i refer to a it will know that i mean 4. i can do calculations for example and it will know what i'm doing now let's think a little bit about the example of the uh, simulations. This is not how in the simulations we eventually will store the data, but just to have a starting point. 
So we can think of a voter, for example, in this ideological space. So this voter might have um, a left-right position, right? And that might be at 65. And the voter might have a progressive conservative value that, say, is 30. Again, we can now refer to this memory uh, by its name and get the value returned. And we can look at the type. So take a second to think what will happen now. So 56 is a rounded number, but we used the decimal point. And so we indicated to Python that it should be treated as a floating point number. And indeed, it has saved it as a floating point number. Now the class, we will not discuss class yet, that is part of object-oriented programming, but the class here is for float. The type of the variable is float. Um, perhaps this voter also has an ID. Perhaps this is the 297th voter. And here, you can see that the type is an integer. We did not use the decimal point, and it's a rounded number. Python will think it is an integer value. And an integer takes less space, is faster to calculate with, etc. So that's how it will be found. Uh, parties will also have a position. We might have a party that has a left-right position of 25.3. And it might have a progressive conservative position that is 10. Yeah? So now we have a whole range of variables. Um, as you can see, we have voter left right, voter progressive conservative, we have the voter ID, we have the party left right, party progressive conservative. These are all spaces in memory where particular values are assigned. Python does not know what they mean, it just knows what type of number it is, but we can then use this in a program. Finally, the party might have a name, um, so this might be uh, Finnegill, for example, and then we can um, print this name, or we can look at the type of this variable and we will see that it is still for string. Um, and perhaps we also have uh, two types of parties. We have uh, hunters and predators. So if we only have two types, we can save it with a, just a Boolean value. We can say it is a hunter or it is not a hunter. So now we have a Boolean value um, called party hunter that is, uh, has the value true. Um, and then we can use them. We can use these values in different calculations or whatever we want to do. Uh, for example, we might want to calculate the distance between the, two, the party and the voter. And we can say this should be the distance on the two dimensions uh, separate. Yeah? So this could be voter left, right, minus party left, right. Let's square those plus voter progressive conservative minus party progressive conservative. And we square this. And then we sort of have a squared distance um, between those voter, uh, party and the voter. If you're familiar with um, Euclidean equation, this is almost like Euclidean distance, except I did not take the square root. So it's a squared Euclidean distance, which is 13.45. Just a measure of distance between those, uh, this party and this voter. So you can see how we can use variable names to store data, how these variables have a type, um, and how we can use calculations then with those variables. And um, Python will figure out what the type must, must be. Because I used um, these particular variables and this equation, the result is also a floating point number. Uh, functions in uh, Python or in any programming language are pieces of code that can be used to um, perform particular operations. And they operate a little bit like a black box. They should operate a little bit like a black box. So I have a function, for example, f. I input some data, for example, x, and something should come out. Uh, some manipulation of x. And in a way, when I'm programming, I don't really want to know how f works. When I'm developing the program, I will define f, I will, so I need to worry about how f works when I'm programming. 
But once I have written the function f, in other parts of the program I don't want to worry about how f works. I just want to know what kind of manipulation it does to x, so that if I give it x, I get a certain outcome. So it's a little bit comparable to a mathematical function, but it can do many more different types of things. So here's an example of a mathematical function. Yeah, I have a function of x that is 3 times x plus 4 times x squared. And this kind of function um, has an input x and then generates a certain output. For example, if I have as input the value 3, then uh, the function of 3 here produces 45. Because 3 times 3 is 9, um, 3 squared is 9, 4 times 9 is 36, so we end up with 45. So that is a mathematical function, and a computer science function works very similar. In Python code, this function would have looked like this. So when we define a function, we use the keywords def, D-E-F, from define, which stands for define uh, the function. So def, then a space, then the name of the function we want to give it. So here it's the function f, but I could come up with any name. Then you get a list of parameters, input values. So the input value here is x, and in computer science we talk about those as parameters. Function parameters are those variables that are the input of a function. So that first line says, define a function f with as input value x, the parameter x. And then we use a colon to start the definition of the function. And on the second line, we need to have uh, some white space, usually a tab key, but it can also be a bunch of space bars, but that is required in Python, otherwise it will not work. And in this case the function is just one line of code. And the return is another special uh, keyword in functions, and it means the, re the value that should come back after the function. So, this says, define the function f um, with the parameter x and once somebody calls this function f, return a value that is calculated as follows. And we have learned last week how to calculate using Python. So this is the equivalent of the function on the left, 3 times x and 4 times x squared. So when we have the mathematical function on the left, uh, we can also do that in, in Python. If we have defined the function f as above, then we can write this code below it y equals the function f applied to the value 3. And this in Python means run the function as defined, where x is now 3. So it returns 3 times 3 plus 4 times 3 squared. And then we can, and it saves this as y. So we get a new variable y that saves the output of the function f. And we can print this variable and then we get the answer 45. So we have a number of variables here. We've just discussed what variables are. You probably already noticed that x and y are variables. Certainly i should be clear to you. Um, but also f is a variable. f is a variable of the uh, type function. So it's a particular area in memory where this function is defined. And we will always refer to that as f. And x is an integer, and y is also an integer value. Yeah, so the number 3 is an integer, the number 45 is an integer. Uh, however, it's never defined, like you will not see the word integer here. Integer is implicit. If I pass the function the value 3, which is an integer, it will return an integer. But if I pass it something else, we also might get something else. If I pass the value 3.5, for example, which is a floating point number, then the output of this equation is also a floating point number. So one thing that is very important to keep in mind when writing Python programs that is different from some other languages is that the type of the variable is always implicit. Python works out from your code what the type of the variable is. You as a programmer did not say what it is. In the latest versions of Python, there are ways of telling uh, Python what the variable type is, um, but that is not how commonly Python programmers are thinking of working. So, until very recently, the standard in Python was always this implicit 
uh, type uh, setting. So the computer works out that if x is 3.5, then 3 times 3.5, uh, sorry, if x is 3.5, which is a floating point number, then any equation with that floating point number should also generate a floating point number. And so Python figures out that y must be a floating point number. But we never set this explicitly. So to recap, a function is a piece of program code, like here the first two lines, that has a name, that has a set of input parameters, and that through the return keyword returns a particular output. And then we can use that, we can save it as a variable like in uh, here, and we can print it and use it, etc. Now, this is a function that we defined, right? So this function uh, to calculate a particular equation did not exist in Python, but there are many functions in Python already, and we will often use those. So, for example, if I have a string like this, s is of, uh, a variable of type string, then I can call the function len, which returns the length of the string. So this string consists of 18 characters. And this is a built-in function that is there whenever you use R, uh, Python. Whenever you use Python, you have the len function. And some functions are called in a somewhat different way with this dot, so s dot upper. So this calls the function app upper on the s object. So instead of s as an input, we now say use this method on the s. Um, and the vocabulary changes a little bit, where len is called a function, upper is called a method, but the principle is very much the same. So this works like a function where we have an input and we generate an output. Um, but here we have a string object, and a string object has certain methods that can be applied to any string. And one of those methods is the upper, uh, method and that is being called here and it puts everything in uppercase um, for now just just know that we can call functions in these two ways and you always need to check which is the correct way so upper cannot call the way len is called and len cannot be called the way s is called, uh, upper is called um, but we will learn more about how this actually works further in the course when we start discussing object-oriented programming we will discuss much more clearly what happens at the end here with s.upper. For now, just realize that some of these built-in functions are not defined the way um, the function on the previous slide was defined, but they can be defined uh, as a method uh, that is part of an object. Here's a bit of a more complicated example. So we might have a variable that is a string variable that is uh, referred to as name, and it is my name. And we have a function that takes one input parameter, name, um, that is defined with the def keyword, and it has the name upper underscore first name. And it has two lines of code. The first creates a new variable called first space, which uh, the, where the value is um, the outcome of this find function or find method. So the find method for a string searches the string for the first occurrence of a particular character. In this case, it says find a space bar in the name and save the outcome. Um, and then we use the return function to return a new combination of that string, the first part from zero until the first space, which we put in uppercase, and the last part from the first space up until the end. So that if we call this function with the string name above, then it puts the first part up until the first space bar in uppercase and leaves the rest in lowercase, or in whichever case it is uh, when it's called. Let me continue with the same example. I make a slight change though. I, I have put the code that I typed uh, first in the uh, REPL in the interpreter on the right. I put it in the code file on the left. And this is an easier way to work. You can see that the code is more readable uh, and it's all uh, coherently together. You can run this code and then um, still make use, I think. So the, the variables are defined here. It works after you run this code, but it is more coherently together. Yeah, so if I use the name, I still get the value that was stored here. And I do this to show you now how a function works. 
we had this squared Euclidean distance and you will remember from that part of the video that the equation was rather long. Yeah? So we had something like uh, party uh, left right minus voter left right and that we square and then we add the party uh, progressive conservative minus the voter progressive conservative and this we square and then we have our answer. But that is quite a mouthful. And you would have to type that every time you want to calculate a new difference between uh, maybe two parties or another voter or between two voters, etc. So that becomes very messy. It is too much work. So that is why we um, create a function that we give a name that shows also better what we are actually doing. So we can, for example, call this function squared Euclid Euclidean. So we make very clear to the user of the program that this is what the output is. It's a squared value of the Euclidean distance. And that one has input values that we use for the calculation. And let's make it a bit more general. Instead of thinking about left, right and uh, progressive conservative, we just think of x and y coordinates because that's in the end what it matters. So we have the x coordinates for the first um, uh, object and the y coordinates for the first object. And then we have the x and the y for the second object. And then a colon to start the definition of a function. And then there is always an indention. There is some white space, a space or tab before the line. That has to be the case because this is how Python knows we are inside the function. And in this case, uh, we return a value. And that return value is x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. So now we have created a new function uh, that is used to calculate the squared Euclidean distance for any two objects as long as we pass the x coordinates and the y coordinates. So I can call this function and save the output. So I can call the distance is the squared Euclidean of um, voter left right and party left right and voter progressive conservative and party progressive conservative and then I can maybe print this distance yeah if I now run this program it will print the answer so it has used the newly defined function squared Euclidean um, and provided us with the distance and this helps because if later then I have a, a new party right I might have party 2, which has left-right coordinates of uh, 3.4 and progressive conservative uh, similar to the other party um, and it has a different name um, right, we might do a call the Labour Party for example then I can calculate separately the squared Euclidean distance between um, party left right and oh, sorry party left right and party two left right and party progressive conservative and party two progressive conservative yeah if I now run the program we get two values the distance between the party the first party and the voter and the distance between this the two parties yeah and I, I Put the print statement right away without creating a variable first. So here we created a variable called dist, but here we did not uh, bother with such variable. Yeah. So this shows you how to create a function and how this function can be used. And this is the example of a mathematical function, but a function can of course be much more complicated um, and can contain uh, variables inside as well. The most difficult part of this class is the concept of variable scope. So we have discussed what variables are. Variables are storages in memory that we refer to by a particular name and that will have a particular value and a particular type. So it can store numbers through integers or floating types. It can store uh, true or false statements by with a boolean type or it can store strings of text. And later we will see it can store many other kinds of things. Um, but these are the core built-in types in Python. So numbers, strings, 
and uh, booleans are the most common core types and then we will get a lot of more complicated types later in the course. Um, and functions are parts in the chunks of the program that have certain input parameters and that might have some variables inside and that then calculate some output and that we can use. Now what is very tricky to understand properly and very important is the concept of variable scope. That means that the name by which we refer to a particular part of memory is only valid within a particular range of the code. It is not valid throughout the code. Um, so if I have a simple Python file where I create a variable at the beginning, I can use it throughout that file. But if I create a variable inside a function, it is only valid inside that function. And if I create a variable inside a function by the same name as a variable that was already there outside of the function, it does not replace the old one. So you have to be very careful to understand precisely where uh, a variable is uh, valid, is in scope, as we call it. So using a variable name inside a function that also occurs elsewhere in the program does not change that other variable. Uh, we can have one x that refers to one part of memory and another x that refers to a different part of memory but is called from within a function and therefore has a different scope. Here's an example. It is the same function I showed on the last slide on functions but I use slightly different variable names. So fs I set equal to 20. Let's not worry about what it means. It is just a space in memory uh, where we store an integer with the value 20 and that we refer to as fs. Then I have some function. I define def a function with the name upper underscore first name and a parameter name and then a colon to start the function. And inside the function I define a variable called fs. It's the same name as the variable that we had already before we called the function. FLS s is the position in the string name where we find the first space. fs stands for first space here. And we return again the first words up until the first space in uppercase and the remainder in lowercase. Or whatever case it was in. And we can call the function as in the next line. Upper underscore first name and then a name returns the name with the first name capitalized. But note what happens to the fs variable. You might have thought that the value of s fs is not 20 anymore, but has changed to the number of the first space. In this case, the number 3. Um, just a side, computers tend to count from with starting with 0, not starting with 1. So the j is at this position 0, the o is at position 1, the s at position 2, and the space at position 3. So fs equals 3 inside the function. But that has not changed fs outside the function. The fs that we created at the beginning of this little script and set to 20 is still valid. And if we call fs, we get the old value 20. It has not been changed by calling the function upper first name or by defining the function upper first name. Neither of those steps changed the value of fs even though fs was a variable inside the function. So this is really important to keep track of. A variable that is defined inside a function is only valid inside that function and disappears once the function finishes. In this case it will actually clear the memory. So the line fs equals name.find that creates space in memory and uses this space to store the number 3 but once the function has um, ended, the return statement has finished, it will actually free the memory, it will remove that space, it will remove that number, um, and it will not be called fs anymore. And we but we still have the old fs that was uh, originally named in the function. And this also has implications the other way around. If inside a function we change a create a variable, uh, or we have a parameter which is also a variable, then we cannot suddenly use that information outside the function. This code does not work. Yeah, so um, here I have a function again, I use a slightly different name, again it's the same function. So I have a function upper first name with a parameter name that first finds the first space and then 
returns the string with the first bit in uppercase and the rest in whatever case it was. I also call the function, but after I call the function, you might think that there is now a variable called nf, but since the function has finished, has returned its result, the variables that we defined inside are not there anymore. If I type nf, I will get an error message by Python. In this case, a name error. The name nf is not defined. It does not know what I'm referring to. Um, 